Okay, so we are in lesson three of our force and motion unit. Um, in lesson one, we talked about speed. In lesson two, we talked about velocity. And now in lesson three, we're going to bring that together and we're going to try to interpret the speed and velocity of an object by looking at a line graph. Um, so one of the cool things about motion is it can be described, but it also can be um, described and interpreted via a graph um, or a table or a chart. And you're going to need to be able to do all of those by the end of the lesson. So this lesson is a little more interactive than lesson one and two in that you have a copy of the notes in front of you. Um, and I'll ask you to pause the video a little along the lesson so that you can do um, some of the graphing exercises and then we can go over the answers. So just a reminder, um, speed is how fast an object is traveling, and velocity is also how fast an object is traveling, but it includes directionality. Both can be graphed um, with a line graph, and that's what we're looking at here. So let's first start with velocity time graphs, speed time graphs. They work the same. Um, one of the things that you need to know is that time is always part of the x-axis. It's always labeled on the x-axis, and velocity and speed are all, always labeled on the y-axis. Now, when we look at a velocity time graph, usually we are describing the acceleration of an object, and acceleration is not something we get to until lesson four. So in the next lesson, we'll learn all about acceleration, um, and we'll come back and revisit these graphs then. Um, but just for simplicity's sake, I want to go ahead and introduce acceleration to you. Um, acceleration is just a change in velocity's rate. And so, of course, on a velocity time graph, we can see how an object might change its rate. All right, so on a velocity time graph, you need to be able to describe what it means if we see a straight line versus a positive slope or a negative slope. So pause the video now and go back to this picture and... I want you to answer those three questions about this graph. All right, so the first question says, what does a straight line indicate? So we see here um, that we have velocity at about 20 meters per second and then 40 meters per second. And then from 20 seconds to about 48 seconds, the velocity stays at 40 meters per second. So you should have answered this, that a straight line basically indicates that velocity is constant, which means it's not changing. A positive slope is going to represent, we can see here in our graph, a positive slope indicates that velocity is increasing. We can see that here. We can also see that here. So velocity is going up. And then question number three wants to know what it means if you see a negative slope. And even though we don't see that on this graph, we can hypothesize that a negative slope means that velocity is decreasing. Right now what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video and I want you to use the data in this data table to um, create a line graph that shows the relationship between velocity and time with regards to this table. Right now this is very a very rough sketch. Hopefully you have some um, numerical data here. But basically you should see that the velocity increases uh, until you get to about 10 seconds. And then we see the velocity start to decrease again. So you have a positive slope. And then after about 10 seconds, you start to see that negative slope. So, so the object is speeding up and then slowing down. Right, we also can represent motion with something called a distance time graph. And you need to know it is very important to read the titles of your graph because a flat line on a distance time graph means something different than a flat line on a velocity time graph. A negative slope means something different on a distance time graph than it does on a velocity time graph. So just make sure that you're aware of that. Um, just like with the velocity time graph, time is always on the x-axis. 
distance is always going to be labeled on the X, um, excuse me, on the Y axis. Um, and then the line just represents overall speed. So remember, we need two things to calculate speed. We need distance and time. So on a distance time graph, you can calculate speed at any given point, which is something that you will have to do. All right, so this time I want you to pause the video and I want you to go back to this graph, your distance time graph, and answer the three questions. All right, so the first question says, what does a straight horizontal line indicate? So I'm going to go back and we see that here. So here, I want you to notice that the distance is 10 kilometers. So at nine seconds, this object um, has traveled 10 kilometers. But then at 10 seconds, the object is still at 10 kilometers. So on a distance time graph, a flat line just means that the object is not changing its position. So if this is a person that might be walking to their grandmother's house, um, then something happened at hour nine, which is a really long time to be walking to your grandmother's house. But um, so hour nine, something has happened. Maybe they needed a break after nine hours. Um, so from hour nine to hour 10, um, we have no change in distance. Now, a positive slope on a distance time graph, let me go back. A positive slope indicates that the object is covering a distance. So we can see that here. The object has covered five uh, kilometers and then 10 kilometers. So we know that the object is actually covering some distance. Uh, a negative slope is going to mean that the object has returned from where it came from um, or moved to a different point. It's no longer on the same path that it once was. So we see that here, um, negative slope. The object is covering distance, covering distance, covering some more distance. And then suddenly they stop covering distance. And this is probably, if this is a person who is traveling to their grandmother's house, at hour 14, it looks like they either reached their destination and then turned around and um, went back home, or they, they gave up after walking for 14 hours and they turned around and went back home anyway. So a couple of different things with that. Just make sure that you know what positive and negative slopes um, mean for distance time graphs. Uh, now what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video and I actually want you to plot these points for a distance time line graph. All right, so if you did that, you should also see for the distance time graph um, that your object is covering some distance. Um, and then it turns around and, and goes back. Um, so the other thing we can do, and let me, all right, so suppose I ask you to find the average speed for this object in the first six seconds. So we have a data table here and we have time and we have distance. And in the first six seconds, this object has covered 15 meters. So we know to calculate average speed, we have to do distance divided by time. So 15 divided by six would give me an average speed of about 2.5 meters per second. So we can interpret graphs. We can also calculate speed, velocity, and even acceleration with these graphs. All right, so next in your notes, you're going to see this picture. Um, and if I were to give you this as your data table and ask you to graph the motion of the car, I want you to be able to do that. So basically, I'm giving you distance and time. So remember, that's how we calculate speed or velocity. And so this time, we're going to have a velocity time graph. So I want you to pause the video and graph the motion of this car. All right, so the neat thing about this example is at zero seconds, the car is not in motion. So this is where we are on our graph. And then from zero seconds to one second, 
the car covers 10 meters. So we can see the velocity of the car increases in the first second. Um, then what happens is at second two, the car has traveled 20 meters. So if I want to figure out the velocity of this car, I'm going to have to do distance divided by time, which is 20 divided by 2. That gives me 10 meters per second. Well, I had 10 meters per second at 1 second. Now I'm at 10 meters per second. So I should see a straight line in my velocity graph. Um, again, at three seconds, the car has only traveled 30 meters, so this is still an average velocity of 10 meters per second. Same thing at four seconds and five seconds. So you can see all the way from one second to five seconds, this car is maintaining a constant velocity. One thing I want you to make sure that you put in your notes and make sure that you know um, is the steeper in these line graphs, the steeper the line, the faster the acceleration. So even though we don't know a whole lot about acceleration at this point, you do need to know that the steeper the line, the faster the acceleration. Um, so we can see in this graph, this red line is going to indicate a pretty fast acceleration because it's more steep than the blue line. You also need to be able to answer questions based on a line graph. So this distance time graph, we're going to use this to answer these five questions. So go ahead and pause the video, answer these questions, and then we'll go over the answer. All right, so question number one says, which runner won the race? So in order to figure this out, it looks like all three runners covered the entire 100 meters. Um, but Albert did it in 12 seconds. Bob, it took him a little longer at 14 seconds. And then Charlie, it took him about 17 seconds to finish the race. So Albert was the winner at 12 seconds. Number two says, which runner stopped for a rest? Um, remember, in a distance time graph, we're looking for this flat line to represent a constant distance. Um, so from second eight to second 13, Charlie, something happened with Charlie where he had to stop. Um, so number two, we would say Charlie. And then number three asks, how long did Charlie stop? So uh, he stopped at... Uh, second eight and then pick back up at second 13. So that's a total time of about five seconds. Number four, how long did Bob take to complete the race? So Bob covered his 100 meters in about 14 seconds. And then number five asks you to calculate Albert's average speed. So remember to calculate speed, you have to do total distance divided by total time. Um, so this is an average speed, but 100 divided by 12 is about 8.33 meters per second, which means that every second Albert was covering 8 meters, which is pretty fast. All right, so this concludes our graphing motion lesson. Um, there is some practice for you, so just make sure that you work on that practice. If you need to go back um, and watch the video again, you're more than welcome to do that. And our next lesson will be over acceleration.